Fox News has a problem. When they reported the election results, viewers damned them on social media and ratings took a hit. Talk radio has a problem. Its biggest star is soldiering on with advanced cancer. Could Trump supporters flee mass media? And could citizen Trump herd them behind his own media paywall? Let's ask Michael Harrison, the publisher of Talkers Magazine, the trade pub of talk media, himself a talker, hosting the Michael Harrison rap on Wonk FM in Washington, D.C., and uh, other talk stations across the USA. And if you Google Michael Harrison rap, you will hear something very unusual in talk radio. You will hear a host who plays it down the middle. And Michael, you've actually taken heat for not taking a position, correct? Oh, there's no safe spot in talk media anymore. There's no safe spot in the American conversation because if you're not with us, you're against us. So if you even happen to mention one word that's out of line with the people who are the hardcore left or right, uh, you know, advocates, uh, you're a bad guy. So I don't even know if down the center is even a, um, an apt term. I would prefer to call myself independent because I do take opinions. I just don't take an opinion ideologically to preach to a choir. The only choir I preach to is my own intelligence and my own conscience. I uh, used to run a big newsroom in Washington, as you know, and the quickest way to tie up the phones would be to give a crowd estimate for a abortion-related rally outside the Supreme Court, and half the callers said you lowballed it, and the other half said you were exaggerating. So this has been a long time coming. Uh, legend has it that before uh, George W. Bush was willingly nudged into running for a president in 2000, he really wanted to be the commissioner of Major League Baseball. And in his book, For the Good of the Game, the man who became commissioner instead, uh, Bud Selig writes that, he and I talked about it. Had things been different, he would have been the ninth commissioner, not me. A Sea League who then owned the Milwaukee Brewers admits, I told him at the time I didn't want to be commissioner, and I really didn't. George would have done a great job. He had a great personality, and he loved the game. But obviously, a funny thing happened in Florida, hanging chads. Fast forward to 2015, when author and journalist Michael Wolff quotes Fox News chief Roger Ailes telling longtime friend Donald Trump, if you want a career in television, first run for president. Election night 2016, Wolf quotes Don Jr. as saying that his father looked as if he'd seen a ghost. Melania was in tears and not tears of joy. And Wolf quotes Steve Bannon saying he saw Trump morph from a disbelieving Trump and then into a horrified Trump. Back to the future. CNN asked about the possibility of a Trump channel launching after Inauguration Day. Note the reply from Christopher Ruddy, who runs conservative Newsmax. Why don't you call me a future business partner? Look at the crowds he draws. He is a very great TV personality. I think he's great to have part of Newsmax, and we're certainly looking forward to having him on. Michael, uh, assuming nothing about uh, Trump's true intentions in 2016, would he play? Would he play as an act on television? He already is an act on television. Or radio. Absolutely, he would play. Or, and radio as well. I, I think Trump is far more effective on television than radio because of the whole facial thing he has going and the, and the mugging. And he's really gotten very good at TV over the last four or five years. I mean, he's really good at it. Um, I don't think anybody would argue that he's a compelling TV personality. You may argue that he's a good president. That's a whole other issue. As for the question of whether or not Trump is going to start his own, they call it, media empire, I don't know whether that would be to his advantage. Because if he, you know, first of all, he'd be bogged down in the business of running a complicated um, uh, company. Uh, there'd be a tremendous amount of financial risk attached to it, as there is in the media today. And the other channels would see him as a competitor as opposed to a welcome guest. He might actually have a, a bigger bully pulpit if he were a free agent and uh, made himself available to everybody as opposed to running his own company. Yeah, other people's money has been his M.O. for a long time. And people who don't do talk radio think it's a snap. I don't think he's got the discipline to host. Do you? 
Well, to discipline to host talk radio, no, I do not believe he has that. Television's a very different business. You know that. You've done both radio and television. Uh, television uh, doesn't require uh, as much prep and as much day-to-day grind it out. Uh, doesn't have instantaneous gratification, and you have plenty of critics at all your affiliates. So I, I don't know whether uh, Trump is really um, ready for primetime radio. There's been talk about him perhaps someday replacing Rush if Rush, because of uh, health reasons, doesn't do his daily show anymore. And I don't know whether, whether Trump would want to do all that work, frankly. The amount of prep that goes into talk radio today, the, the, the number of issues and the angles and the originality that you've got to master to be able to do a show on radio today. You can't just, as the saying goes, you know, mail it in or call it in. You've got to really be present and on top of things. I don't know whether Trump um, has that type of focus. According to uh, his staffers, he doesn't like to be briefed. He doesn't like to be lectured. He doesn't like the small stuff. And it takes a lot of that to do a really good job in talk radio. Yeah, it takes more time to plan the show than to do the show. You mentioned Rush Limbaugh. You and I and thousands of our brothers and sisters in the talk radio family will always owe Rush. He prolonged the life of AM radio. And I remember you telling a packed auditorium at a conference in New York 20 years ago that talk radio would also save FM which is now uh, facing an existential threat from streaming and satellite music services. Michael, Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity and the other syndicated shows that make up the bulk of airtime on political talk radio have relieved those stations of the expense of grooming new talent. Is the farm team still there to produce somebody to take over that noon to three slot when it's time for Rush to step aside? There is nobody in the radio business today that will be able to replace Rush Limbaugh as the next Rush Limbaugh, at least not on my radar, uh, which doesn't mean that all is lost and that there's no farm system. It's just that uh, Rush Limbaugh is a once-in-a-generation talent. And, um, you know, radio is about to celebrate its 100th anniversary. I would go so far as to say that Rush Limbaugh is uh, probably... And this is not a political statement. This is a broadcasting business statement. He's probably the most important radio talk show host in that entire time span. His impact has been profound. So uh, Rush is an entity unto himself. But uh, no, the farm system in radio is not what it used to be. It has gone more corporate and it's gone more national and more syndicated. But as long as people are talking and as long as they're interested in not just politics but all the different aspects of life and culture, I think that there'll always be talk radio and I think there'll always be interesting people to step up to the microphone and do a good show. Radio conservatives have always seemed to do better when there's a Democrat in the White House and Joe Biden could certainly galvanize that act as they now become the resistance. Do you think you think there's an opening for a kind of talk radio that sounds more like Biden than Trump? Uh, certainly there is. It just ha it takes talent and um, it, it takes somebody or, or uh, some people or a network that's able to do it in a way that's as entertaining and satirical and compelling and captivating as the conservatives have been. Um, it is, it's healthier when the talk show host is attacking power as opposed to defending power. Now, this is just my own personal view of the responsibility of the media and the First Amendment. So if, if you are, you know, an independent citizen on the radio doing a talk show and you are criticizing the most powerful person, person in the Western world, the president of the United States, there's something exciting and daring about that. When, in fact, though, you're on the public airwaves and you are defending the most powerful person in the world, it takes away the edginess. It takes away that whole First Amendment, freedom of speech, daring aspect of it. So that's why I always think it's better for the opposition to be opposing the current president as opposed to defending the current president. It takes tremendous courage. And if you look at it historically and you look at it globally, just look at the world and the way things are, Standing up to power is always a dangerous thing, and that's where the excitement is.